Happy Tuesday, Rosa Parks. Today is Tuesday, December 8th, 2020. At this time, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Today, led by the boys and girls from Mrs. Weggison's class. Great job to the boys and girls in Mrs. Weggison's class. Friends, please remain standing for our moment of silence. Today, during our moment of silence, I want us to bow our heads and think about someone that we can help today. Maybe that's your mom or your dad or grandma or grandpa, a big brother or a big sister, or a little brother or a little sister. But think about someone that you can help. That means you might help them with chores, you might help them finish something. But let's bow our heads and think about someone that we can help today. Let's bow. Great job, boys and girls. You may be seated. Don't forget that every day our Perry Township, Perry Township Food Service Department is offering a hot lunch um, from 12 to 1 at every elementary school. Um, tomorrow for lunch is calzone with broccoli, pears, and milk. Um, there is a slight change to the menu for Thursday. Um, it will be the ch cheese pizza instead of the chicken tenders, I believe. Um, so the Thursday and Friday meals will have changed a little bit, but tomorrow for uh, Wednesday is the calzone. Um, we have no students celebrating a birthday today, but we do have a special staff member celebrating a birthday today. A very happy birthday to Mrs. Brummett, our secretary. Um, many of you see Mrs. Brummett every day when you turn in office folders or when you come into the office. And so um, when you get back, be sure to wish Mrs. Brummett a happy birthday. All right, friends, you're doing a great job of taking good care of your Chromebooks. I've not gotten any reports of Chromebooks being damaged or broken. I'm really proud of you for that. Keep up the good work. All right, we had a really awesome, awesome um, attendance on Thursday and Friday, and I haven't checked Mondays, but we hit 90%, which is fantastic. So keep joining. I know um, Mrs. Swales and I are going to pop into some of your Google Meets throughout the week um, just so we can say hello and see everyone. Um, and so um, I hope you continue to do a great job. All right, friends, after our announcements, we will have a special guest reader reading a holiday story. I hope you're still filling out your blue um, read, winter break reading challenge sheet. As you can see, I already have nine titles on mine, and um, I have 31 more titles to go, so I better keep reading. All right, friends, it is going to be a marvelous Tuesday, a terrific Tuesday, sorry. Um, we are going to have... Um, um, we're going to have a great day. We're going to make good choices. We're going to work hard on our virtual learning. So my challenge for you today is to make sure you're participating with your teacher, doing your virtual learning lessons, and joining at your small group meeting times. But as always, I want you to treat people right. Treat people right. And live right. Hello boys and girls, I'm Miss Ripberger and I'm reading a story today about a moose who has a problem. Let's see if you can figure out what the problem is and how he solved it. This story is called Mooseltoe. It is by, the author is Marjorie Palatini and it's illustrated by Henry Cole. "'Twas the season, and Moose was very merry. His joyful tickle, he joyfully tickled the ivories with a tune full of tidings and a flurry of fa-la-las. He was so full of ho-ho-hos, even his moustache had the holiday spirit. But Moose was more than just a bit merry and bright. He was busy, busy, busy. There was a lot to be done on his list of to-dos. But with orderly organization, a bit of regimentation, 
lots of imagination, and just plain old moose know how getting ready for the big day should have been simple, easy, yes, in all probability, just perfectly perfect. He wasted not one merry minute. Moose got moving and putting some hustle into the hus holiday bustle. He went to work. He, ro he wrote cards and letters till his hooves hurt. Check. He shopped till he dropped. Check. He hauled home boxes and bags and presents galore. Moose had gifts for everyone stacked from ceiling to floor. Check, check, check. Then he rapped, yo, 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 and he ribboned, ho, ho, ho. And on each and every package, he tied a big, beautiful bow. Check and double check. So far, so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect. Another look at the list, and Moose headed for the kitchen. I wonder if you know what's going to happen next. He pulled out the pots and pans and bowls, sifted through stacks and racks of cookbooks. He whisked with his left, spooned with his right. Moose baked tons of tins of cookies. Check. Dozens of cakes, breads, and sweets. Check, check, check. He made jelly, sticky jams. Moose roasted a goose and some chestnuts. He toasted marshmallows and yams. Check, check, check. Triple check. Yes, yes, so simple, so easy, and, but of course, so perfectly perfect. Decorations were up next on his list of things to do and get done. Moose decked the halls, then spruced up the walls. He beaded, bowed, and mooseltoed. He gathered garlands, roped wreaths and holly, jingled bells, sang noels. Oh, good golly, this moose was jolly. Check, 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 check. Last but not least, he hung all the stockings, each and every one with special care. And just in time, too, soon, Santa would be there. Check and final check. Yes, sirree, getting ready for Christmas was absolutely a snap. And so simple, so easy. And if he did say so himself, Moose thought totally, utterly, completely, perfectly perfect. On that night before Christmas, mother, little sissy, Bucky and Junior looked all through the house. What a job Moose had done. Everything looked beautiful. Festive, quite fine, indeed. There was just one minor problem, if you will. Oh dear, sighed the missus, as the five stared at one empty corner. Oh my, oh my, oh gee. Pop, what happened, cried Junior. Do you know what's missing? You forgot the tree. Moose first hooked it down to the corner, not a tree to be had. Then he slid around the block. Uh-oh, things were looking bad. He went down every boulevard street and little road. He looked down the lanes and alleys. Every tree had been sold. There wasn't a branch. Not a twig, not even one lousy bowless bough hanging around. Nope, not a nothing, not a tree to be found. No tree sighed moose, a sad moose as he came home empty handed that snowy eve. The kids tried to make the best of it. They said, oh, so who needs a tree? But Moose could plainly see they were short on glee. He knew he had to do something, and that's just what he did. In the empty corner, he stood and spread his arms out very wide. Then he smiled at his children, and he winked at his bride. 
Kids, he declared, fetch your forgetful pop some of that tried and true family glop. So back came the kids carrying a pot of glue and without a word to one another, they knew just what to do. They each took apart, grabbing strands, taking hold, then carefully, oh so carefully, they glopped and they plopped, they pasted and they pressed, they curled and twirled each every with each and every follicle they could fathom until Moose's magnificent moustache was indeed even more of a marvel to see. Moose was just a few needles shy of being an evergreen tree. They strung Moose with lights from head to his toes and draped him with tinsel beginning right with his nose. They hung balls that were shiny and bells that twinkled, candy canes, berries, and plums, sugar sprinkled. Then they all stood back Junior plugged in his pop. Ooh, ah, yes, Moose truly was an incredible sight. He was glorious and glowing, uh, and boy, oh boy, was he ever bright. Then Junior placed the star on top of Moose's head. He gave him a kiss and a pat, and they all headed off to bed. Except Moose, of course. He stayed in the corner instead, still twinkling and blinking and waiting for Santa. Oh, it wasn't so simple and it wasn't so easy. And okay, okay, it wasn't perfectly perfect. But do you know what? It was pretty close. Ho, ho, ho. What did Moose do to fix his problem in the story? He did a great thing and found a way to fix it. All right, boys and girls, I hope you are good problem solvers at this Christmas time too. Merry Christmas from Ms. Ripberger.